In this class we're going to talk about the determinants of market demand and we're going to start with the price of the product. Uh, if you consider the the demand, the, the determinants of demand, we could write down an expression like that which is quite long and quite ugly to be honest but um, it incorporates most of the factors that tend to determine our demand. I'll just put the cursor onto the screen so we can talk across it for a second. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> the symbols here are, are as follows. The QT here is the quantity demanded per unit of time. It's a flow concept. Flow means over time. So it's my demand for petrol per week. T per week, per, per unit of time. Quantity demanded the quantity demanded per unit of time equals and this sign here means depends on in mathematics it's got a different meaning it means integration but we'll just simply write it as shorthand for depends on so the quantity of the good demanded per unit of time per week or per day or whatever is equal to well, in other words, it depends on... And it depends on what? Well, it depends on everything inside the brackets. And the brackets here are quite long. So we start with the, the price per unit. We can't just say the price, because um, if I said the, the price of petrol was uh, a pound, is it per litre, per pint, per gallon, per barrel? makes a lot of difference. So we have to specify a unit. So it's the price per litre. And then we've got the, the price of related goods. So if this is the price of butter, this could be the price of bread. PZ. Y is income. In economics it's always Y. Y stands for income. The reason for that is a very famous economist called John Maynard Keynes back in the 1930s <coughs> he he called income Y, shorthand. So uh, it stuck. So whenever we see Y in economics, we know it's income. T for tastes. Well, the amount we buy of things depends on how fashionable or how desirable they are. And that is a function of advertising and marketing and so on. So T for tastes. The amount we buy of a particular commodity might depend on the population. The more people there are in a country, the bigger the demand. Makes sense. It depends on the distribution of income within the community. If there are only a few rich people and everybody else is absolutely poor, perhaps the demand is, is be very small. Depends. So it depends on the distribution. Also, if the distribution shifts, if it shifts say, in favour of older people, then the demand for perhaps MP3 players might, might fall off. Whereas the demand for, I don't know, beds might increase. Depends on the seasons as well. Uh, we consume more energy in winter, more electricity, more gas. Depends on the government, government policy. It might try to discourage us, for example, consuming alcohol or uh, smoking cigarettes. And the last one, U, well, U doesn't stand for it, it just means something we've forgotten. Because the chances are we haven't got an exhaustive list here, we've probably left something out. And if we have left something out, U is it. It's a portmanteau term, it picks up everything we've forgotten. So that's our expression. It's quite a long and quite complicated, but each one of these leads to help to explain the demand for goods. So output depends on many variables, and what we do is we simplify this using the assumption of Cateri's Paribus. Now how Cateri's Paribus works is we simply take, instead of taking this long expression here, QT, depends on price per unit, price of alternatives, income, taste, and so on. Instead of saying that, we just simply say, well, output, sorry, output, quantity demanded, I should say, quantity demanded per unit of time depends on the 
price per unit. Kittery Sparrows. So where's everything else gone? Where's all of this lot gone up here? Well, we've assumed it to be constant. Everything else being constant. In other words, it doesn't influence anything. It's just, it's constant. We were making that assumption. It may not be a reasonable assumption to make, but it's what we do all the time. We we focus in on something and see what the relationship between that and something else is, even though there are other influences. So we use Kettery's Paribus a lot, and it's used a lot in physics and in the natural sciences. Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and so on and so on. But it enables us to get two variables here. That's the main point. And if we've got two variables, we can draw a diagram. Two variables. Here's our two variables. Quantity per unit of time, price per unit, price per unit, quantity per unit of time. So we've got two variables. We can have a diagram. And what we're seeing here is the demand slopes downwards. It's our demand curve. It's a behavioural assumption, really. The price and quantity are inversely related. We're we're assuming that uh, that's the way people respond. If the price falls, we buy more. If the price goes up, we buy less. Reasonable assumption, in at least in most cases. A change in the price will cause a movement along this demand curve. So if we change the price, it'll cause a movement along the curve. So we've got, um, let's say, a price of P1 and a quantity demanded per unit of time of Q1. That's the quantity demanded. Now, if the price falls, let's say, to P2, then the, um, the quantity demanded may increase to Q2. In other words, as the price has fallen, we have moved along the curve. We've moved from one point on the curve to the next. So, <clears throat> a change in price will cause a movement along the curve. And that's one of the, the big outcomes of this session. A change in price will cause a movement along the curve. Remember this. This is our um, full scale, full, full scale uh, uh, classification of what determines demand. These are all the variables we listed out earlier on. And what we've done now is we've focused in on the first one and we've explained the first one that as the price falls, more is demanded. As the price goes up, less is demanded. In other sessions we'll look at each one of these other variables. But for the moment what, we, uh, what we're talking about here is that this, this lot here if one of these changes, it will change the position of the demand curve. Change in this one causes a movement along the curve. So a change in PU causes a movement along the demand curve. But if I change any one of the others, it will change the location of the demand curve. The demand curve will shift. It may shift inwards or outwards. And that will be the, the subject of other videos. Okay for this one, so